1962 is a bigger novel than my previous ones for many reasons. Two main reasons. One reason is that it took me 25 years to write and finish. I started it in uh, 1992 and uh, finished it in 2016. It is a novel that uh, uh, spans uh, decades, uh, how, most of the half of the 20th century and the beginning of our new century. And uh, it is an attempt to tell the whole story. We have a main character called uh, Josef Löwe, who is trying to make sense of his own being, uh, what on earth he is doing in this world. And uh, to do so, he uses every known trick in the history of literature, oral literature, written literature, uh, filmed literature and whatever. He's trying to make sense of his being and he's trying to justify his, uh, his uh, place uh, in life. Uh, so that called for a, for, 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 for a big novel. And uh, usually when I write, I envision the whole work right from the beginning. I knew, for example, that Moonstone was going to be a small novel. I knew it was going to be a small, sharp slice from a given year in Icelandic history. And Cotes 1962, I knew was going to tell a story that was so big that uh, it uh, needed to feel like it was uh, exploding out of the covers. One of the great benefits of the novel is that it can embrace all other literary forms. I've uh, said somewhere that uh, it's like a big whale that just swims through the ocean with its mouth open and swallows everything that comes its way and then digests it. And in this novel you will see how I use every, every genre uh, that has ever, uh, uh, ever found me, let's say. So there is poetry in the book. There are, uh, there are pieces of theater in the book. There are, uh, there are uh, uh, elements of the grand epic in the book. There are, uh, there are anecdotes. Uh, everything's in, a, in that novel and uh, that is what I love about the novel. I can flex uh, all the literary muscles uh, I've got in my brain. And the novel uh, is such a wonderful opportunity to try to tell it all. A poem by nature always admits that it is only a fragment of a greater reality, but the novel can at least pretend that we can tell it all in one book. As my novels have been translated to 35 languages uh, as of today, uh, I have been uh, engaged with uh, so many uh, different translators in so many different languages all over the world uh, throughout the last uh, 15 years, let's say. Uh, I have enjoyed an especially rewarding relationship with the translator of the, of the, of the English novels, of the English editions. Uh, because English is the only of those 35 languages uh, that uh, I, I know at least a little bit, so I can have a good dialogue with uh, Victoria Cripp about her work. There are always things that uh, come up where uh, the translator simply tells me uh, 
well, you're referring to something that is very well known in Iceland. Uh, an Icelandic reader would get this, uh, get this um, uh, allusion uh, instantly. Uh, but an English reader, or a, or a German reader, or a Bulgarian reader, or a Arabic reader uh, would need a little help or another solution here. And I'm very open to that. I'm a big reader of translated uh, fiction myself, and I know that uh, while uh, compromises like that have to be made, uh, so much is gained in, in other places in the, in the same translated uh, book. So I, I just love, love meeting my translators, and I think they are fascinating people. You know, uh, they take a, 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 they take a whole culture and they translate it in each book. It's not just getting the words right, it's translating the culture and channeling the culture from one place to another. So I'm, I'm quite engaged with my translators and uh, I always uh, tell them that I'm, I'm, I'm there for them. So if they want a dialogue, I, I, I'm there for it. I would say that Codex 1962 is a true novel uh, because it tries to tell it all. It tries to give a total picture of, uh, of, uh, 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 of an individual. Its narrator is really trying to build up a portrait of himself, of his mother, of his father and the world that he was born into without asking for it. So it's not a surreal novel at all. Unless you see surreality as the total reality that we live in. One of the things that I've been working with uh, from the beginning of my writing life is the idea that everything that the human being experiences is of the same value when it comes to literature. So uh, our inner lives, as much as our everyday lives, matter to the story that is being told. So I never hesitate to uh, include dreams or memories of actual events or memories of things read or heard by the character. I never uh, uh, hesitate to include whatever is needed to keep the story going. And uh, that of course makes the novel, and especially Codex uh, 1962, uh, different in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in shape than uh, ordinary realist novels. But I think I'm of the tradition of uh, novelists who are expanding the possibilities of the novel. And uh, we always say that we are the true realists. Icelandic literature is very old. It started in the 13th century with the writing of the medieval sagas. And uh, writing became the only constant cultural activity uh, on that small island up there in the North Atlantic, simply because we were too poor to build cathedrals or to uh, form uh, symphonic orchestras or have arts academies or anything. So we just kept writing. So we have a long history of that. Uh, I would recommend two sagas actually, uh, the saga of Eitl and uh, Erpikja saga. Uh, both are uh, fantastic examples of uh, how advanced the storytelling technique was already in those days. Uh, Eil saga is about uh, uh, 
character, a man called Egil Skadla Grimson, who was both a poet and a warrior. So the perfect uh, example of a of, a, of, of an Icelandic uh, being. The, uh, Elpica is notable for its uh, uh, strong elements of the supernatural. And we have wonderful early examples of the walking dead in, in, in that story. Of uh, more recent uh, books, uh, uh, I would like to mention uh, The Fish Can Sing by Halldór Laxness, our Nobel Prize winner from 1955. A beautiful story uh, about a young boy in Reykjavik at the turn of the 20th century. And in many ways the, the, it has the essence of, 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 of um, so many, many, many themes and, uh, and, uh, and um, ways of storytelling that you find in, in Icelandic literature. And the third would be uh, Butterflies in November by Auður Ava Olafsdóttir. It's a recent, recent novel by one of our best uh, women authors, and uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good example of, of uh, contemporary Icelandic life, and it has some great recipes in it as well.